Ladies and gentlemen, um, hope you're doing fine on this Haskell field summer midday. And the next speaker is not only an experienced Haskell, C++, C Sharp, Python programmer, uh, he's also finishing work on the book Functional Design and Architecture. You should check it out. In addition, I found out myself that he's a passionate discutant, a phenomenal writer, and the author of an innovative framework called Hydra. Uh, it's a full-fledged framework for building web services, multi-threaded and concurrent applications, uh, which is the poster child of his own methodology, which he calls hierarchical uh, free monads. He deserves your warm welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, Alexander Granin. Alexander, the stage is yours. But before you start, um, I want to mention that Alexander will, talk, will take all his questions after his talk in the QA room. All right, the stage is yours. Hi, all. Thank you for inviting me to this great conference. Uh, and I'm glad to present you a talk in which I'm I'll try to share my love to free monads and STM with you because it's a love conference. Uh, and we will talk about uh, what is it like to write uh, applications using free monadic frameworks and how is it to use STM uh, within this setting. And we will talk about consequences of this choice, this design choice, and I ho I'll hope you uh, we'll find this approach uh, interesting and maybe you can uh, even try it in your production because uh, I, I treat and uh, some uh, free monadic frameworks are already uh, serving a company, for example, uh, some companies, for example, JustPay. And uh, this is not only a, a theoretical uh, talk. It's about my findings on, in, in the field of software design, so I hope it will be useful. And before we start, let's me, let me uh, present you the plan. So uh, firstly, we'll, we'll talk about uh, simple applications and demo applications maybe uh, I've built using free monads and STM. We will talk about some design patterns involved there. Then we will we will touch testing and uh, discuss how we can uh, test uh, this kind of um, uh, relation between free monads and STM. And uh, then we will talk about uh, the internal stuff. Uh, maybe uh, we can uh, deep more uh, deeply that more deeply into the internal stuff uh, if we have a time at the end. So. Uh, Let's, I think we can start now because uh, the time is short and there are so much things to discuss. So the first uh, part of my, uh, my presentation is about uh, my love to free monads and STM. And let me present you the first uh, application, uh, which is a game. Initially it was a paper and pencil game, Labyrinth, Aka, Terra Incognita and uh, I just transferred this game to my Hydra framework as a, as a demo application, which can show you how to write applications with this framework. And uh, well, actually it's quite uh, simple uh, and all you need to know about this framework is that, that there is a set of uh, internal uh, languages which are free monad based languages. And one of them is lang L as you can see here on the slide. And these languages provide you some different effects uh, in, uh, which you can use in your business logic code. And uh, this is not only a set of effects but rather a set of interfaces to subsystems. And this means uh, those uh, subsystems will be abstracted uh, and nothing um, unexpected, nothing, no uh, implementation details will be visible from your business logic code and business logic code will stay clean and understandable. Uh, for example, you see here on the slide, uh, there is a print labyrinth function which um, 
read some, two variables from, from the application state using uh, read var IO function. And those variables uh, are closely related to STM and we will see how. Uh, and I, th I think this is very s simple code, right? You don't have to know about uh, what monad is uh, STM and uh, how to deal with it. You just have some interface uh, and you can use it. Uh, for example, the two variables, uh, labyrinth and player position are state wars and those state wars are naturally um, wrappers around the uh, uh, STM variables and we will see how it works. And uh, these state wars can, can be uh, seen as just uh, tiny uh, variables which don't have any actual logic. Notice there is no any actual data of type A, but still you can uh, work with this data. How this works? What is this magic? Well, I, I call it uh, as a type of avatar pattern and I find found several applications of this pattern. Uh, for example, you can uh, have a variable uh, avatar for your internal variables, which are served by framework. Or you can have an option uh, as a variable, which doesn't carry the option itself. Uh, and it, it makes the code really abstract, I would say, and enables different uh, other approaches. For, for example, enables an interesting approaches for testing. Uh, let me present you another script in this uh, game. This script uh, is initial uh, functional labyrinth app that will be uh, run when you start the application. And this uh, function works inside another monad, FL, which is also a free monadic language. It has a, a little bit different set of effects. For example, uh, it has a subsystem which I call CLI, command line interface actually. And this subsystem allows you to uh, declare your uh, command line interface. Uh, for example, commands go up, go down, which uh, makes sense for this labyrinth game. You can walk around the labyrinth and then you can interact with, with the around world. And uh, what, what's interesting here is that once we can declare this uh, um, command line interface, uh, I call it this control structure pattern. Uh, we also can interact with this uh, command line interface. And in, in basically this um, subsystem will work in a separate thread because a uh, player can type commands in, in the terminal and, and uh, other things can happen in the background. So we need to, mm, uh, to interact with this mm, subsystem safely, namely mm, using uh, maybe uh, STM or MVARS possibly. Uh, in here, you have a, an abstracted way to interact with, with CLI using the same uh, wrap around STM. And for example, here on the slide, we are waiting for a um, finish condition. And once this condition uh, happens, we can uh, close our application. And this is very handy actually, because uh, a part of uh, waiting for finishing from the command line interface, you can interact it with it in a different manner. You can send commands, for example, uh, depends on your needs. Uh, and let me present you the second application, which is also a demo application within the Hydra framework. And we will talk about more uh, concurrent stuff now. Uh, so here you see a part of the logic about Meteor counters, uh, Meteor application, which uh, produces meteors in different areas of Earth, virtual, uh, meteors for sure uh, and counts them 
this is an application which is intended to show you how to deal with processes pro processes and uh, for example you can um, have five processes one of them will be uh, counting the meteors using internal uh, application wide variables um, to because those variables are also esteemed variables because all of those processes can write in the same uh, memory and they should be synchronized somehow and the stm works really great for this and another finish condition on the slide uh, this time we wait for a certain number of meters registered and then we finish the application uh, this is a really a simple logic and when you have such division separate processes separately business logic uh, is also separated then you have to structure your application in a certain way which improves the code quality but those applications were just some demo and now let me present you a really interesting one which is about a blockchain application uh, about blockchains uh, we've built for uh, a company which has a name Anycom and this is a really complex system because we had um, several different nodes and those nodes could interact using TCP, UDP or J JSON RPC and not only that they also had some background processes uh, which could um, calculate internal data for example uh, they could maintain a graph of blocks so those parts could be um, really independent and they should interact somehow and this interaction is also made with STM and and here you see a piece of that logic this is a definition of a node this the graph node will be holding a graph and it can serve UDP requests coming from other nodes all around the world for example and currently it has only two uh, methods but this is not the limit for sure uh, and you can add more methods here declaratively uh, also we de declare processes this time the processes are will, will be waiting for a signal which can come from command line interface and this uh, these signals will uh, trigger internal uh, function which takes which will take a graph and either dump it to a separate key value data base or restore it from a separate data base so uh, we can interact with those processes and again some definition of command line interface and uh, uh, a condition to finish the node you can notice that all these functions i presented to you have really similar parts so this is why i uh, call my approach is a method methodology because you can build different kind of applications uh, with with the same design which i think should improve the code quality because it's much easier to introduce uh, a uniform application to to newcomers it's much simpler to uh, create your business logic when you know how to do this you have already patterns right and a few words about as the um, state uh, which we can maintain inside our applications this state is very specific to your application uh, it's not about uh, the internal state of of the framework which is separated and hidden under the hood this is only about your domain so you, you can have arbitrary data um, and 
all your uh, business logic can access this data and even you can use st state wars to to not bother about concurrency problems which works fine actually because our uh, test uh, blockchain system had not that many problems and we managed to build it uh, bug free i would say not really completely but bug free but uh, i would expect even more uh, much more bugs in when I use other approaches or other languages at all. So uh, in here we have a predefined structure of our applications. There are three monadic chains for scenarios, right? And uh, different processes can uh, act with those scenarios and call them. And those scenarios can use uh, state, for example, node state, which is presented here as uh, graph service data and uh, node status or internal graph which is embedded into the uh, node framework and configs and etc so all the state your application would would need uh, interesting is that those state wars which keep a boolean variable can be seen as signal bars. You can uh, make your code uh, uh, await for, uh, for a signal var when it becomes true or false. And this is how we can uh, uh, create an interaction between uh, our threads. They can uh, react to our uh, to signals from other variables. This is all essentially um, comes from STM and nothing really fancy here, right? You even can see the same interface for our uh, for our STM-like subsystem. It's it's a M here, but we will uh, uh, elaborate what is M here because there is a state IO uh, type class, but the interface is pretty much the same. There is a retry, there is read var, and there are other functions like atomically and write var IO. Uh, so it's just a wrapper, but it has several additional features, not only uh, those uh, features which STM has. Uh, and several, uh, words on, on the graph. So the graph we built for our node framework can, can be really complex. It can have different branches. It can grow in, uh, in different places independently. And even we managed to create a, an approach active window. This active window will keep uh, a particular part of the graph in the memory. And once we uh, leave this active memory, the graph will be dumped into a QVDB automatically because there is some process which uh, looks, which waits for active window to, for its movement. And when the moon happens, we can automatically uh, upload the data to QVDB or download it from there. So uh, this helped us to uh, create a, an interesting uh, node which don't um, consume too much memory, for example, and works really interesting, really, really fine, because this is all should be concurrent, all right? And therefore we have STM under the hood. and in, Essentially, our uh, in-memory STM-like graph becomes an in intermediate level between uh, requests from outside and QVDB itself because several QVDBs don't have uh, transactions inside, but we could uh, simulate it with STM anyway. And this was mm, a, a great challenge, but it works nicely, right? Okay, uh, let me uh, talk about uh, the STM-like subsystem a little bit more. 
So in here you see again a Freeman magic language state L, uh, which has the same methods as STM. For example, new var, read var, write var, retry, but also it has a logger interface and we can actually see uh, how it works. Uh, well, apart from logger interface, it can evaluate uh, work on the graph. The graph um, also is a separate uh, free monadic language. So we nest one language into another here. And this uh, language, for example, has a new node, delete node, and other methods. And as I said, you can have a login in your uh, transactions. Essentially, this, this all state L uh, function is a single uh, STM-like transaction. And look at this. Is it, is it not, uh, uh, how cool is it? Because uh, you can have log, login inside your transaction. I'm not sure uh, what will be the logging in, inside a normal STM. I, I can suppose you, you will have, you would have some variable and once you hit a log info function, you, you will need to update your variable for, for logs, push some uh, messages there. And after you uh, leave STM, real STM code, all these variables should be flushed, right? Uh, but in here, you don't have any specific variables. The state L language will take a responsibility for uh, storing your messages under the hood and flush them when the transaction is successful or deny them when it wasn't successful. And the interface for logging becomes really clear. You don't, you don't need to know what logging uh, library is used and what are other uh, configs here. It's all doesn't matter for your business logic. You can configure your logger interface uh, on the start of all the free monadic framework application, but here is just a pure business logic, which is, which is really good. And uh, now uh, we, let's talk about testing. Uh, very, really briefly. So what we have uh, for uh, nodes, we had to create a virtual environment so that we could start nodes within this environment and uh, they could interact via some internal, um, I would say intermediate label because uh, naturally uh, you, it's, it's possible to start several nodes uh, on your machine for sure, uh, like independent applications, but sometimes you, you want to uh, uh, control them more granularly. And in here we can send requests to those nodes and check the results of those requests. And this is how we can test nodes. Uh, this is a integration test. Mm. Still, it's possible to test uh, free monadic applications like the Labyrinth game uh, using more uh, uh, common approaches. For example, uh, it's possible to run our kind of pure logic of generation uh, of Labyrinth uh, as, a, uh, as a pure, but not really uh, function, and then we can check the results. And here I use uh, a property-based testing to uh, check uh, that the generated labyrinths are okay. They have uh, a predefined uh, bounds and a, a correct number of wormholes. Uh, but of course, it's possible to test your applications using uh, a predefined uh, uh, testing framework, which is uh, provided by the Hydra framework itself. You can uh, start your um, business logic code using test interpreters and you can mock them if you need. For example, you can mock log login interface, you can mock uh, IO interface and other effects which, which, have, which are presented in the framework itself. 
And uh, I think we can uh, move further. How does this magic work? Uh, well, actually, we found that it works nicely and we successfully mm, used this kind of approach in our uh, uh, commercial applications. And it turned out, turns out that business logic becomes very simple uh, and approachable. For, of course, you can write it uh, uh, not um, to be messed. You can write it as a mess. You can uh, create a bad code, but still uh, the uh, separation of concerns like interfaces and internal stuff makes the code much more clear. Uh, we found that testing is very simple and you can even ha have an approach I call automatic white, bo white box testing of, for deriving tests automatically once you have a free monadic framework. And the main idea here is separation of concerns with free monads. It, it's, I think, the best in, in uh, comparing to all other approaches. Uh, and I also hear that there are problems with uh, performance, which is true for uh, normal free monad. Uh, you, you see it here, you can see it uh, goes to infinity, but there are different free monads. Actually, there is church encoded free monad, there is free monad from the paper and uh, reflection with no remorse, if I remember it right, and they work uh, they are in pair with F final tagless uh, and maybe even with IO. So this is a debatable question and you can take Hydra and test it yourself because Hydra provides different engines based on all those approaches and there are applications to uh, test the performance itself. And finally, what I learned uh, good design is better than performance because you can fix the performance once you have a good design, but not vice versa. Uh, getting things done is better than perfection because uh, uh, people uh, work for achieving goals and uh, our goal is to deliver something working than something perfect, which is um, not often working. So I think getting things done is much better. Tests is a kind of a documentation, not only a correctness check, so you can present tests to your teammates, but you cannot present correctness to your teammates. So tests should be um, more preferred or correct, correctness. Simplicity matters. This is uh, a truth that helps you to easily work within a, a team or maybe uh, within a big company which, which um, has different uh, projects and once those projects are complex, it's really hard to, uh, to achieve goals. And also people are greater than technologies because we, we should talk with people but not with our uh, technologies. And it's better that people understand you than computer understands you. Right, and uh, there are uh, different rum rumors around free monads, and I think uh, everyone should experiment with free monads before uh, before some rum rumor will be confirmed or de declined. And there are different resources I created to support this uh, talk and other talks, so you can check out them. And I think this is it. And thank you for your attention. Uh, you can enjoy uh, my book. I provided some discount for it. And if you have a uh, time, I could talk more. But I, I think it's all right. Yeah, you're on time. Thank you very yeah. much. It's, uh, it's been a great talk. Really, uh, your manifesto at the end, it should have a name. <laughs> it was really great. Um, I'll send you a link to a Q&A room. 
which you can join right now and answer uh, you know all these these questions that uh, will um, will uh, attendees have. Uh, it's here in the chat. Thank you very much. It's been really great talk and. Uh, in many cases, an eye opener. Um, by the way, where is when is your book out? Well, actually, my book is uh, 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 I finished it. I published it on Linpub, and there are only several uh, tiny things I need to polish it to fix. So yeah, it's, it's complete, the, actually. It's listed as ninety nine percent done on, uh, I think. Linpub. Yeah, because we are currently doing. Uh, professional editing of this book, like fixing uh, English grammar and uh, graphics and all the other stuff. Okay. So I expect Great. it to to be complete in September. September. Nice. I think I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, please join the QA room. And once again, thank you. Thank you for the great talk. Thank you.